So today we're going to be learning how to fracture an object and within that we're going to be learning how to animate it using the animation engine within Element 3D. So we're going to need to create a setup object here. I'm going to be using 3ds Max and a free script that's available in the link below that you guys can use to follow along. You can use uh, C4D or Maya, it doesn't matter as long as you have some other like plugin or script that allows you to fracture an object and export it. So let's run uh, the script here. It's called Fracture Voronoi. And just to get started here, we need to pick an object that we want to fracture. And we need to set the amount of objects that it's going to create. Let's just run the script. Okay, so you can see that it creates a bunch of little bits that we can use then to uh, animate. So let's do the same thing for the interior part. You just want to make sure that you reselect a different object. And I'm going to do 75 pieces for this one. And let's break it. So now we can export this. And you're just going to want a single OBJ file. You can do multiple ones, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do one just to make it simple. And so let's just save it here. There we go. Okay, so now we're ready to jump into After Effects. Okay, so let's open up a new After Effects file here. And you're going to want to create a new composition. And let's create a new solid layer. And you're going to want to add the Video Copilot element effect to that. And so now within uh, scene setup here, let's go and import the new OBJ that we just exported. So let's uh, apply a new material here. I'm just gonna apply a standard gray material. We're gonna also need to reorient the OBJ so that it's facing upwards. That looks pretty good. Okay. Let's add a camera. One of the things too, I'm going to just uh, disable depth of field for now, just so that it renders faster. So how the animation engine works is it transitions between two different layers. And so if you have an OBJ on group one and on group two, and then adjust some settings on group two with the animation engine enabled, you'll see that we can animate a transition between those two different groups. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's go into the scene setup here, and we're gonna to want to put it on two different channels. We're gonna to to put it on channel one and on two. Now you'll find if you just clicked, uh, left clicked on either or, it wouldn't be able to select both. You have to hold down shift in order to select multiple groups. And so down in the animation engine tab, let's enable the animation engine. Okay, so you're not gonna see anything right now because the animation has to be different. Right now, group one and group two have identical parameters. In order to see the effect, let's go down to group two, enable multi op like multiple objects so that all of those individual pieces can be animated. And let's just choose random rotation here. And again, you're not gonna see anything because we actually need to animate the transition. When it's at 0%, it's 100% on group one. When it's at 100%, you can see now it's taking effect because it's now 100% in the group two settings. So if we put it to 50%, you're gonna see a blend between the two. And right now it's a directional blend, which means that it's gonna be moving from this side to this side of the object. Let's just animate it here so you can kind of see the effect taking over time. So now you can see it moving from left to right. And this direction can be animated as well. So there's directional, uniform applies to everything all at the same time. 
radial is as it sounds and you can pick the center point and direction as well random and the shape order which is based on the id of each individual piece so let's stick with directional for now and I'm going to actually adjust it so that it comes from the upper left hand corner. There we go. So I'm going to actually switch these keyframes around. We're going from zero group zero to group two, but I actually want to start from group two and animate down to group zero or sorry, down to group one just so that we can start fractured and land on a finished logo. So now the cool thing about this is that anything you do to group two will animate properly. So under the group one settings, I'm also going to enable multi object. So group two is the, the change effect. So let's, just kind of play around with the settings here. I'm gonna play around with like scatter and displacement. The other thing too that I like to do is go under the deform tab and play around with a few of the different parameters here. Playing around with like bend, you can kind of create these like really interesting effects. Because what it does is you're actually you're playing around with the deformer, which deforms the entire group. Try uh, doing twist instead. There's so many different types of uh, effects you can get, even just playing around with a few of these different variables. So I encourage you guys to really play around with them as they can give really unique looks. on with the uh, the scale as well just add a bit of randomness what's really cool about the uh, the element effect is that it's all true 3d so this can be rotated around you can animate camera position and you can also animate the depth of field just to add that bit of realism. So it's going to be harder to uh, see because we've got a bit uh, black background here. Um, but if we go within the element settings, we can improve the look as well. Just go under scene setup. Just picking a new environment. under the render settings let's just adjust a few things here let's change the uh, the material first off just so we can kind of see things better
uh, also enable motion blur. And I want to uh, enable ambient occlusion as well. I'm just going to set the uh, the quality to medium here, just so that I can save a bit on processing. And let's change the focus distance, just so that the ending logo is in focus. I'm just going to uh, rotate the background here. And I'm going to increase the, uh, the shadow depth. Let's also uh, animate the camera just so we can get a bit of movement. This is the uh, keyframes I wanted to land on, so let's just add a bit of rotation. Also going to be animating the focus distance. Let's also add just a, a bit of color correction here. Let's also add in a light here. If you uh, change the view, you can see the entire comp from a different angle, just so you can kind of set your light better within uh, 3D space. So I encourage you guys to uh, play around with like the camera settings, play around with the animation engine. There's tons of different effects that you can achieve just by tweaking a few different uh, settings within that. And yeah, I hope uh, you guys learned something and I'll see you next time.